Hello everybody, my name is Benedict and uh, welcome to our session about uh, Kubernetes development environments, local Kubernetes development environments. And uh, yeah, let's start the presentation. <coughs> okay, so my name is Benedikt Oetesberger. I'm uh, 40 years old. I'm from Cologne, Germany. I work at Mogenius and I'm a, a DevOps engineer and software developer. I like to program in uh, Go and TypeScript and uh, Swift and a lot of Bash. Yeah? And uh, my main focus is DevOps topics, backend development, and of course, the most important part, Kubernetes. Uh, my hobbies are family coding and acoristics, and uh, you can contact me uh, at my email address or uh, on X. Okay, perfect. So today we are talking about what problems are we facing with local development environments. We're going to look into uh, why we need local development environments in Kubernetes, and we are going to do a live demo and create, run, and deploy a container app locally. And we are going to look into how it works. So first of all, what is the problem? So for developers, and uh, it's very complicated when you first get in touch with Kubernetes. Uh, for experienced Kubernetes uh, users, admins, it's, it's pretty easy, it's pretty much straightforward, but when you first come into contact with Kubernetes, you have a lot of um, names which you are familiar with, but they mean something different in Kubernetes. And uh, so you have to learn a lot. And uh, works on my machine still happens with containers. Yeah? For example, if you have different uh, CPU architectures, uh, you still have works on my machine. Yeah? And uh, containers do not completely solve it. And uh, yeah, when you just focus on container or on your container, which you run on your uh, Docker environment uh, or your container environment on your system, you are missing out a lot of Kubernetes essentials. And if you, in the end, will integrate everything, it will not work as expected. So, for example, a config map, services, secrets, ingresses, PVs, PVC, storage classes, and I guess around 40 more workloads, uh, which are essential, and you need to consider them. Maybe you need them, maybe you don't, yeah, but uh, you're missing it out when you just focus on the container layer. Networking, when it comes to um, hyperscalers like AWS or Azure or um, GCP, yeah, it's pretty complex yeah, because there are a lot of computers involved yeah, until you reach your Kubernetes cluster. And you do need to have a lot of uh, knowledge about the vendor mechanics and about VPNs, firewalls, permissions, RBAC, and whatnot. And uh, it can be very complex if you just want to deploy your small little application, uh, your microservice, into the cluster and test it out. So we are going to solve this with local Kubernetes environments. And how are we going to do that? So we are going to use Kubernetes on the developer's machine. In my case, it's a Docker desktop uh, with Kubernetes enabled. And we call it uh, kind, uh, which is Kubernetes in Docker desktop. So let's check it out here. I already opened the settings. So just regular Docker desktop. And if I go to the Kubernetes settings and hit the enable button here, it will spawn a, a very capable Kubernetes uh, cluster. And this is what we are going to use for this scenario here. So let's go back to the presentation. This is what we're going to do. We will augment a cloud-based Kubernetes yeah, with load balancer, SSL certificates, and certificates, and all this stuff yeah, uh, right on your local machine. And the outcome will be that uh, devs can run containers locally, 
but in a production-like Kubernetes environment. So you have everything in place. You don't have any switches like if local, then do something like that, disable proxies or whatever. I've seen so many configurations like that. Yeah. You can do it exactly the same way like you would run it in uh, production or in or in any stage environment, yeah, it doesn't matter. So, and the impact of doing this can be really amazing. Yeah? You will speed up your work. Yeah? You don't have any external waiting times like for pipelines or environments to spin up or stuff like that. If something breaks, you simply reset your local Kubernetes cluster. It takes around five to ten seconds and you then you can start from scratch and this is awesome yeah so you're going to speed up everything you will have better results yeah because um, the thing with uh, works on my machine will happen less often because you are running already a kubernetes instance and stuff you overlooked before running it in kubernetes uh, you will have it covered because you're doing already a fully fledged kubernetes it will also reduce your costs because all your components can run on your local machine. That means you might have already have uh, like a really beefy machine, yeah, like a M, M2, M3 uh, with 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, and so your machine is more than capable to do that. And uh, it just takes a, a few watts of energy uh, and everything is set up and ready to go. This will reduce your CO2 footprint, which is very good. And it will also reduce your bandwidth, re bandwidth requirements. Uh, because in some regions of this uh, world, you might have uh, really slow internet. And uh, it's less of a problem if you do everything locally. OK, so let's hop into the demo. Uh, in our demo, we are going to create a simple app. We are going to containerize it, make it run in Kubernetes and Docker Desktop. We are going to add SSL, and then we are going to work with it locally. So first of all, we are going to create our simple app. In this case, it will be a Go application, which is very straightforward, because we simply have a gin tonic package uh, which uh, prints out the current Unix timestamp on port 8080. That's it. So you can also do like complex operators here. And by the way, if you guys are interested, I'm going uh, to show you introduction into creating operators if you are inter interested. And uh, let's start this application. I have already started it. So let's check out if it works. So I have a simple curl here, which is piped into JQ. Yeah, so we have a little bit of formatting. And yeah, already it's working. So first step is done. Our local application is already working. And we get our timestamps here. So let's check it out. Yeah, we have a nice debugging output. So I'm going to cancel it here. So and the next step is we are going to containerize this application. To do this, I have prepared a really simple docker file for this a multi-stage docker file uh, and we have a build stage and a run stage and uh, yeah it's nothing special although i should upgrade to go 22. <laughs> okay so let's build this docker file perfect now i have um, a repository called meetup operator uh, i already tested it like three hours ago so i guess it used it from cache and uh, the next thing we have to do is we have to create some Kubernetes manifests. So um, we can set up everything in Kubernetes. First of all, we are going to create a deployment. In this case, uh, I have purposely set up uh, a wrong image here. This image does not exist, so it's going to fail. And the image policy, pull policy is also if not present, which is default, but we need to change it in a few minutes. So just keep that in mind. So the service is nothing special, just cluster IP, 8080 port, and uh, so we can access it. And we have an ingress um, set up, so we can reach this service mm, under the domain or um, the host name meetup.local.mogenius.io. This local.mogenius.io is something you should keep in mind. 
Uh, also that we set up a secret for that and a TLS host. Okay, so now I've applied the three manifests here and they have been created in my cluster. Oh, the next step will be we are going to fire up uh, K9S, update the image and the pull, uh, image pull policy so everything works. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to st start K9S. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to pods and I see, oh yeah, this image has an image pull error. Okay, so let's go to the deployment and update this image. So first of all, we are going to call it, what it is called locally, it's called meetup operator, oh, typo, operator, and the image pull policy will be never. So by using this, so this is the image I just a few seconds ago created, meetup operator, and it's, it's stored locally in my Docker desktop. And the image pull policy is never. And this tells Kubernetes to use the local Docker desktop uh, image registry. So this will be very fast because it doesn't have to pull it from anywhere. It just lo uses a local available uh, registry. OK, so let's save that. Well, let's jump into it. And we can see it's already running. Perfect. So if I go now to this here and call this again, nothing is working. So why is it? Let's go back to our presentation. Yeah, we need to do a port forwarding first, obviously. OK, so let's jump back here to the port create a port forwarding to 8080, hit enter, go back to our check, and perfect, now we get requests from our Kubernetes cluster. And if I run into the logs, I can see them here. Very good. So this thing already works. So the next step will be to access a HTTPS site, so a SSL secured website, and with this special domain here. So let's copy it. OK, I've copied it. And change the address here. Execute it and it's already working. Perfect. So I've, and I have no problems here with SSL verification. The HTTPS uh, works perfect. So let's go back to our logs and I can see here the referrer is different because it's now coming um, through the metal LB load balancer. And this is the IP of the load balancer here. So very nice. This is already working. So and now you guys might ask yourself, why is it working? Oh, before we proceed, we will check it out on the website. So I'm going to uh, do that like that and do a hard refresh here. Perfect. And if I check out. This is not an SSL secured website, obviously, because you cannot secure local host. This is not possible to create a certificate. Or you have to create the certificate into, into the browser, which is very not convenient. So let's check out what's happening here. This is our special domain. If I do a hard refresh here, everything is working again. And if I check out the connection, it's secure. And the certificate is valid. And you can see the certificate is valid from 20 January to 19, 19th of April. It's created by Let Encrypt, and so it's working perfectly. OK, so let's jump into the presentation again and look at why this works. So first of all, let's do an NSLOOKUP. So I did an NSLOOKUP on test.local.mogenius.io. And I can see that it's a wildcard domain. Yeah? And so I already know it always responds with 192.168.661 as an IP address. This is a local IP address. And uh, I have already, or, or I have also set it up on my local machine. And so we can map it here. And this is one of the most important things. So we have a wildcard certificate to this IP address. So let's hit enter. So what are the requirements? So first requirement will be Metal LB as a load balancer. 
The second will be traffic, but it also runs with Nginx ingress controller. Um, and you need to install the TLS certificate under certificates. You also have uh, um, to do some more steps. Yeah? One step would be like you have to identify your own bridge interface. Uh, you can see how I did it here. Uh, this identifies my bridge interface as zero, um, as 100, or bridge 100. And I'm going to set an alias to this uh, for this IP address. This is the IP address, the DNS record response. Okay, so this is the next step. So we'll set up everything like that. Then we introduce an address pool for MetalLB, and maybe we call it MoPool, for example. And we uh, tell it to use this address range from 1 to 50. So we have IP addresses for our load balancer. And then we are going to do a simple patch for the service of the traffic, so that the traffic is now going to use this IP addresses. And when you have also set up your uh, TLS certificate, so let's look it up here. I go to secret, secret, hit all, and then I see there is a certificate with a secret which is called local homogeneous IO TLS. If I do an X on this, I see there is a TLS cert public certificate and a private certificate. And this is a way we are going uh, to make certificate manager, third manager, like validate uh, the certificates. Perfect. Let's go back to the demonstration. So if we have set up everything until here, then we have a completely fully fledged local setup, which is capable of doing nearly everything you can do inside the cloud and everything with open source software. Okay, so let's summarize that. First of all, we have uh, identified pitfalls before going into the cloud by using Kubernetes uh, local development environments. Hopefully, we have leveled up our Kubernetes skills with this stuff. We have introduced a convenient way to uh, use local SSL certificates. By the way, we have a GitHub uh, web uh, page where you can like read every script out and check everything we have done here. Maybe it was uh, too fast in this presentation. We have improved the speed of uh, your um, whole setup. We have reduced costs, your CO2 footprint, and we have reduced the bandwidth usage. Okay, and uh, yeah, now I'm at the end of this uh, session. Thanks a lot for your time. And uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, contact us, uh, especially at the KubeCon 2024 in Paris. Yeah, some of us will be there. And you can also check out our GitHub website, where uh, you have everything uh, about this presentation, yeah, all scripts and uh, also the shell script of this presentation. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot uh, for listening and enjoy your day. Bye bye.